the sun you get intense flop. Flop is, you know, where the color change is happening based on the amount of light hitting on the surface. For a car, it's like how a fender curves or something. You get a lot of flop where the fender curves. That's the reason I like the color changing paint. And, and the color changing paint just made sense because of all the curves. I could really take advantage of that, that flop that happens. I don't really know where the initial premise for a lot of these were, where they came from. It's just a lot of playing in the studio. And I think resin was the, the jumping off point as, as a material. And that's what it, it is for me, is sometimes the resin, it's, it's a material, it's a color, it's a pattern. And then I just run. Yeah, after I get the form, this, this is more vertical, so it's a, you know, I did kind of an upright, an, an apparatus through the middle of it. Uh, then I just, it's probably three, four coats of resin to, to saturate it, to get everything to kind of freeze in the shape. And then from this state, then I'll, uh, I'll hit it with like a rubberized coat, coat to seal everything and then uh, one more layer of resin, and then I'm ready to prime and paint. Right now, it's gonna be really rough, so I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on this one. I just wanna get all the rough knobs off, and then crisp up the curve, so when the paint gets on there, you get a really good flop. edges. I, I want them crisp, you know. I want a nice clean edge. And I, now that I got this last coat of resin on there, I can get this edge nice and... I mean, that started as just a soft piece of foam, and now it's a nice, crisp, carved edge. Yeah, the piece back here is, is probably one of the first ones I did from the series of just playing with the resin and then actually using the color changing paint to see what kind of effects I would get and uh, seeing how how the resin would affect the, the, the you know the, the upholstery form and uh, getting these great organic effects from this one then I actually did this kind of mint colored one where I was really there's a lot more layers of that uh, color changing paint with gold and I mean, initially, I, I didn't really like this, and now it's one of my favorites. Uh, the gold really pops on it. It's just a different, it's not as in your face, it's more subtle. And I really love these pools that end up happening and how this kind of subtly just sneaks in and out of those pools uh, in terms of the form. Continue to play with that. I love this little ridge too on this one. Then this kind of root beer colored one. You know, when you're, when you're working with color changing paints, you don't really officially know what the effect's going to be and this uh, uh, when it's in the, the intense sun it's it's bright red and gold uh, but when it's all neutralized it's kind of this root beer color which is kind of interesting but you can already catch some of these great flop effects that are starting to happen the golds that are starting to come out of this but then from here I actually started to kind of play with these smaller ones which I really love because I can get so much I don't know, interest out of them in such a small sort of package, I guess. And uh, you get a lot of color change with these because they're the, the, the changes, the loops are much more intensified. Um, this was the first one I think I did that was a smaller one with these kind of bigger pieces coming off. I love these edges that, that happen. 
The paint itself is, you know, it, it, it's going to just leave a pretty flat finish, but as soon as you introduce the pearl, then you get these great highlighted, highlighted peaks within the piece. And I'm going to continue to play with that. At least I feel like they need probably another coat of pearl to just to intensify that effect a little bit more to make it really feel modeled and, and sculpted. The cool thing about resin is that it, it can capture something in transition, right? When something's going from one state to another and it'll freeze it, a lot like architecture. And once I started to go vertical like this, this is where I'm, I'm really excited. It's like, you know, a, a piece of fabric blowing in the wind or something, but we've frozen it. And I'm super excited about where the direction's going with some of these. Yeah, these original ones, I think, I feel like they're more in the context of painting. That was kind of important to me. That's why the square format, putting them on a, uh, uh, a panel and they're you know they they have that ability to kind of blur the lines between painting and sculpture uh, which was important to me but with this piece now and, and the, the pieces to follow I mean I'm not concerned about that as much I'm just more thinking in sculptural terms This one in particular is a paint called Twisted Guava, and it has, it's one of the more expensive <laughs> color changing pigments, and it just has intense flop from green into violet into gold, and at the same time, it's got just a little bit of flake in it, that little bit of sparkle, and it doesn't take much to get that crazy intense flop out of it. It's like something from outer space. I love it. 